Hi, I'm Sebastian James, and uh, I just I would like to talk to you about Chapter Seven, which is the chapter on tax incentives around the world. In this part, uh, as you are looking at the global overview of uh, the use of tax incentives, uh, this chapter will give you a window about uh, what are the tax incentives being offered uh, for uh, in developing countries and get a sense about uh, how different they are as compared to the tax incentives being offered in the developed countries uh, and uh, hopefully give you a sense um, about their use, their prevalence and a little a discussion about how they are, how effective they are, uh, and uh, what's the what's the solution? How can governments then deal with this? The fact that they are so prevalent. Um, so I'll quickly take you through this chapter. And in the first uh, first part is we discuss uh, is we do a survey of uh, tax incentives being offered in over 150 countries, and we find that. Uh, the most prevalent tax incentive is are the tax holidays. Uh, tax holidays are basically uh, a tax break being offered for a certain period of time. That is, you no know, taxes for the first 10 years or 15 years of the project. Uh, turns out this is the most popular kind of tax incentives. It's not surprising why it's popular for business, uh, but it's surprising that it's so prevalent that the fact that nearly 80 to 90 percent of countries in most regions offer these tax incentives. Uh, on the other hand, we find that uh, their use among OECD countries is very, very limited. OECD countries, just 12% of OECD countries offer tax holidays. Uh, this is a very, uh, this, this, this uh, move, this, this, it's a kind of very interesting uh, dichotomy on the use of tax incentives. Because OECD countries have moved away from tax holidays and they have started providing tax incentives in the form of investment linked incentives. And by investment linked incentives, these are in incentives, investment incentives that are linked to the size or the nature of in the investment. Uh, so for example, if you invest in plant and machinery, you get a certain tax break or you get a certain percentage of the investment. On the other hand, uh, tax holidays, there's no such link. It's, uh, it's, it's a blanket it's a tax break from your income taxes, from your corporate taxes. And uh, that's uh, and but and it turns out to be that's the most prevalent in the, in the most of the developing countries. Uh, we also see that most of the countries are beginning to use uh, R and D tax incentives. This is very popular. Governments want to attract in, uh, the new innovation. They want to attract innovative industries, and you find that this targeting is happening, um, increasingly happening in uh, many of these countries, led by the OECD countries. Uh, I also then quickly look at uh, the what's happening. Are these incentives growing over time? Are they almost the same? Uh, we find when we look at uh, all the regions of the world, we find that they're nearly the same. Uh, maybe a slight drop, but nearly the same over the last 15 to 20 years. While in the sub-Saharan Africa, we find the tax incentives, the use of tax holidays have actually gone up, including other tax incentives. And we find that especially tax holidays while countries are uh, beginning to maybe withdraw tax holidays from the overall from the whole country, they offer it more and they more often than not offer it in special, special economic zones. You know, So special economic zones are these enclaves where governments provide certain tax benefits, customs benefits, then in May we find increasingly they also offer tax holidays in these in these special economic zones. So we, if we see this trend of increasing use of tax holidays, uh, especially in special or special economic zones. So, uh, the fact of the matter is, tax incentives, is in, at least in certain regions, have gone up rather than gone down, and uh, uh, so that's that's a, that's a fact uh, that we find. The other, uh, then I, then I the, the chapter then looks at uh, the use of VAT exemptions and customs exemptions. You know, these are two big sources of revenue for government. And governments try to minimize the impact on investment by giving tax breaks under these taxes. But it's uh, surprising uh, in the case of VAT because VAT is designed to be uh, uh, ne neutral. Uh, the incidence for VAT is supposed to be zero on businesses because at least the way it's designed, all the input taxes for businesses are allowed to be taken out uh, from the taxes on sales so that the businesses do not bear any taxes on the inputs. That's the way the VAT is designed. But we find that uh, governments offer exemptions even under this tax, uh, 
uh, especially if you compare in sub-Saharan sub Africa you find uh, there are a lot of tax breaks for transportation, tax breaks on agriculture inputs, so it inputs of like agri uh, inputs into agriculture like any machinery, um, you know, seeds, fertilizer, they're all exempted from VAT. Though in theory businesses could take in those, pay those taxes and then just take it out of their taxes on sales. But you find this, uh, this happens uh, uh, despite the, the way the VAT is designed. Uh, then you also see the same thing on customs. We find a lot of use of tax uh, exemptions, uh, duty exemptions on the customs. Uh, at the, in the end of the chapter, we discuss on what could governments do to manage these tax incentives, and we find an, a significant aspect uh, of this is the use of discretion. Is that is how governments uh, use discretion in providing these tax breaks now. Now, we all know tax breaks are going to be beneficial to business, but the question is, if these if these tax breaks are going to be uh, provided on a case by case basis, uh, you know, uh, it's it's based on uh, relationships or based on uh, you know without any proper framework, then they could be misused and they could it could be worse for the investment climate. Uh, for example, if if there's a, a one tax break being offered to one investor while the competitor who would like to enter the market is not offered the same tax break, then that puts the competitor in a disadvantageous position and vice versa. It could be possible that the first investor did not get a tax break but the second one did. And this is this, this is the result this, this is the result of discretion and discretion can can be uh, can be very bad for the business environment. Um, but we find that discretion is very, very common. Discretion in providing tax incentives is very common in many, many countries. Even in the OECD countries, we find that they are nearly, and we talk about discretion both on the policy side, that is, I decide what tax break you get, versus, and on the administrative side, is even though you qualify for it, you need to, you need to get approved through the process. And so, um, and that's one thing we advocate that, okay, we have a lot of tax incentives, but at least they should be transparent, they should be offered in a discretionary manner, everybody should know what the rules of the game are, and that actually helps in, man, in mitigating some of the disadvantages of the use of tax incentives. Uh, the fact of the matter is that a lot of tax incentives are being driven by political considerations. Uh, the fact that uh, you know, it's easy to announce, easy to put on the ground quickly, while tackling much deeper business environment problems takes, takes time. So there's a political bias in giving tax incentives. The costs of tax incentives are, are much in the future, uh, while the benefit at least is very political that you could make an announcement. So these are the these are some of the biases that drive tax incentives. And one way to mitigate this bias is to provide more, more transparency, to reduce the discretion uh, so that it's not taken over by special interest, and to have countries do cost-benefit analysis of the tax incentives, whether they have reached the intended goal that they were designed for. Uh, such kind of reviews we believe will be more beneficial for countries. Uh, I hope you uh, like this chapter and, uh, um, and hopefully it will whet your appetite uh, to, re to read more about this. Thank you very much.